Hi Reza and thank you so much for coming along to help me. Uh, we have our virtual S1 information evening tonight for our S1 parents and carers yep. and some of our parents and carers have sent in some questions. Mm -hmm. um, some of these questions I think it would be appropriate for you to answer. Yeah. So if you don't mind I will just ask the question and then you can just give an answer to the question for our parents, carers and of course our new S1. Yep. Reza, from your experience, do all teachers use Shobi for setting homework? Um, from my experience, uh, no, all teachers don't use Shobi. There is Microsoft Teams, there is Outlook, which is just putting work in through emails, which works as quite well as well as well in my opinion. And there is Socrative to assign quizzes, but in my opinion, all four of them work quite effectively in giving a, a like providing learning tools for the people. And do you think, um, Reza, if the worst was to happen and we were to end up in blended learning or 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 lockdown, mm -hmm. that um, young people would be able to access work from all areas across our school. Yep, especially with not just since we're not like um, bound by like just Shobi, let's say. There's lots of like platforms and different types of works. Like for example, Socrative is quite good for quizzes and timed quizzes, but then Shobi is quite good for the teachers marking it. Like you can just mark straight on the iPad, which looks, in my opinion, looks quite realistic to paper marking done by Red Pen. Brilliant, so, so yes. we're prepared. We're very prepared. <laughs> glad to hear it, glad to hear it. Yep. Um, Reza, what would you do if you were a young person in S1 who had a problem with their iPad? If I was a young person in S1, the first thing I think is to go to the IT department, obviously. And in the IT department, um, while we go in, there's a table just in the hallway, and there's chairs there with digital ambassadors. These ambassadors are pupils that are trained to basically helping with problems rising uh, coming out for the iPads. So you go to the ambassadors and they can help you fix or at least note down your problem to pass on the information. To Brilliant, them. and you're one of those ambassadors, yes. yes. Well done, and thank you for continuing to do that. Yeah. Um, Reza, are there any opportunities in the school for young people um, regarding pupil voice? Yes, there's, uh, of course, as I mentioned, the digital ambassadors, yeah. which they just don't work with the teachers, they work with the students as well in, uh, getting information like for uh, like a personal experience of mine like Miss Gunn was asking a couple weeks ago how has anybody heard anything that's been so like it's difficult to the students and lots of our ambassadors said certain issues that Miss Gunn, Ms. Gunn wasn't aware of that. and there's obviously the people parliament which is essentially a big voice for what the peoples want in the school. Brilliant. What about extracurricular activities? I know it's been quite difficult this year. Yeah. Any ideas when they'll start and what is actually available in our school? For availability, when I first came to the school, I was like quite surprised by the amount of like just different areas. And even within these different areas, there's certain, like many different like extracurricular activities. There's obviously sports. There's not just one sport. There's like all the main sports you can think of. The and even if you want, as I talked about people's voice, a couple of my friends last year made a volleyball club talking to the PE teacher, so that was excellent. And there's not just sports. There's English. There's the debating club. There's arts, uh, creativity and arts select clubs for people's interest in those areas and so on. There's Plenty to keep S1 occupied. Yeah, there's one you find out there's one, like there's a new one every day. Uh, yeah. Excellent, and final question for you if you don't mind Reza is, is there any peer mentoring in our school for our new S1 young people? Yes, there is peer mentoring. Last year I was part of peer ment a couple of peer mentoring programs. The first one was peer greeting sessions, which was for pupils who was in, whose English for whom English wasn't the first language. So the role for us was to take them out from class during our free periods and basically read a book with them. And after that book is finished, we go on to a more difficult level book and so on and so forth. Hopefully, like hoping their English levels increase by the end of the program. And I was part of another uh, mentoring program. It was called MAP, it was Medics Against Violence, where we make aware of all the people, like the dangers and how to avoid violence in just day to day life in Glasgow. Brilliant, thank you. And just a quick question yeah. from me. What would be the one piece of advice you would give to an S1 starting your school or who have just started their school? S1, I would say, don't take it too seriously. Enjoy S1 and enjoy our school. It's Our school has to offer a lot compared to, like I, I've been to a few different schools in my life and Hollywood, ha Hollywood has one of, been one of the best in terms of opportunities. So enjoy Hollywood and get to know your teachers and make new friends in S1. 
Brilliant. Reza, thank you very much for your time today. Sure. You've heard it here from Reza. Thank you. And another few questions that have come to us, so thank you very much for sending in your questions. Really important that we're here to answer all of the questions that you have. And if you haven't managed to send in any questions, but you have some, please get in contact with us. One of the questions that was asked was about lockers. So yes, there are lockers available for some of our S1. Mrs Brady will be in contact with S1 through the mini assemblies that are taking place. And also I would suggest that S1 listen out for tannoys where they will be allowed access to lockers. The lockers are £10 for the academic session. And then if they want another locker next year, then they would have to pay that again. That goes towards a number of things in our school and to help support charities that work in our school in addition to replacing the padlocks on a yearly basis. There was also a question about whether or not S1 were allowed out for lunch. We do not allow our S1 out for lunch. Um, S1 is a really important time for young people where they get to grow together as a year team. And also we want to keep our young people safe in S1. So S1 stay in school. They will go to the fuel zone and in the fuel zone they can either take, collect the free school meal if they are a free school meal or if you have paid for the lunch through our BACS system then you can, your child will be able to collect a lunch from the fuel zone or alternatively they bring their packed lunch. Once they have finished their lunch there is an S1 yard and they will go into the S1 yard where Mrs Brady, Miss Cook and Miss Gray will be there among other staff who are there to get to know your children. There was a question about what happens if my child has an appointment during the day. So we would ask that generally speaking we try to avoid having appointments during the school day. But if it is unavoidable, so it's a dental or a medical appointment, then your child should report to either Miss Cook or Miss Grey. And Miss Cook or Miss Grey will issue a green slip. The green slip must stay with your child at all times. That is evidence of permission to be out of school and the attendance will be updated as permission. The question that came in was about what would happen if you or your child was to test positive for COVID-19. Obviously that's extremely important at present. So if you yourself test positive for COVID-19, as things stand at home, the whole family should self-isolate for 14 days. So we would ask you to keep your child home for 14 days, to contact the school. The attendance will be marked that your child is at home and we will ensure that there's work available for your child during that time. If your child is to test positive for COVID-19, then they would remain home through the 10 days of when the first symptoms started or when they tested positive. If they are ill, there would be no expectation that they would do work. But if they are able to work, then they, we will provide work through using some of the digital platforms that Reza had described for you earlier on. If the symptoms are to come on while your child is at school, your child will be placed in our, one of our first aid rooms, which is, is specifically for people with COVID symptoms. And um, we will phone home for you and ask you to come and collect your child as soon as possible. And the final question that came in was a question for our parent council, which was about how to access parent council meetings. So I spoke to Joanna. Joanna Murphy is the chair of our parent council and Joanna has asked that I pass on the following information for you. The parent council has been adjusting to holding virtual meetings on Zoom and so have been limiting the meetings to previous members. However, now we have started the new session, we are working out how to involve the whole parent forum and plan to communicate the details of that to parents very soon. In the past, membership was open to any parent who would come along to the AGM and then would be able to attend the meetings regularly after that. We are trying to adapt to the new practices and considering to how to keep in touch with all interested parents. As you can imagine, the last couple of meetings have been entirely focused on what the back to school arrangements were and trying to get things back to normal. But from the next parent council, we'll be back to our usual agenda, which focuses on school business and school improvements alongside new initiatives. We will be getting the parent, uh, the parent council information in minutes on the school website. And we are always keen to involve new members. So look out for texts that will come from the school in the next few weeks. If you are looking to contact the Parent Council directly, the email address for the Parent Council is holyroodsecpc at gmail.com. That's all lowercase, holyroodsecpc at gmail.com. Thank you very much for your questions. I hope we have managed to provide answers for you. As I said earlier, if you do have any more questions or anything else that you would like to find out about our school, please get in contact. Thank you.